This is Quarter Paint back with another tutorial. This time we're covering weathered reds, Evil Sun style, with the Shock Jump Dragsta. All right, here's the color list of what we're gonna work with. All right, so you can see we started off with a Vallejo primed black on everything and I kept the buggy sub-assembled. I think with all these new GW miniatures, it's really important to, to work in sub-assemblies. First simple step is to just coat uh, just about everything in warp lock bronze. This time I, I used the airbrush for that, but you can paint it on with a brush. All right, then grab the lead belcher and a nice soft dry brush. And we're gonna do a relatively heavy dry brush all over the warp lock bronze here. Uh, this is how I do all of my kind of dark metals. Um, I will, you know, wash over this. But uh, the trick to kind of working my vehicles is working in um, layers of color and texture. And so this sort of starts as this like metallic layer that I build color and other things on top of. All right, so. All these early stages are rough, coming in with the Mephiston Red. I thin it considerably, but you can actually be a little bit sloppy here and just kind of block in the sections that you want to be red. Uh, you know, again, you can take this approach with another color, but this is my approach for specifically for Evil Suns. You can see I'm just kind of fleshing things in quickly. It's, uh, it's not, you know, kind of a, a flawless layer because there's gonna be some washes and texture and other, other layers that are gonna come up over this. You just don't want this to be too thick. You don't, you don't wanna obscure any details. You know, you don't want to leave any like uh, thick, rough paint texture. All right, so you can see, just blocked in the areas that I'd like to be red. I quickly, for some metallic variation, uh, popped in a little bit of the hash nut copper on a couple of the, the items. It helps break up some of the, the silver, you know, using some of other other varied metallics. I then brought it in on the, the you know, the engine portion. All right, going back now to the, the lead belcher dry brush here. This kind of provides like a, a weathered effect onto the uh, the red that we just painted on. Again, you can kind of see why I did not um, kind of apply it too carefully here because I knew that I was gonna come back with the, the dry brush. All these stages were leading me up to using a great product, which is AK Interactive Streaking Grime. You can see this is an enamel paint. So this is not thinned with water, it is thinned with mineral spirits. Here it's listed as white spirits, but uh, same thing. Um, it flows uh, kind of unlike anything else if you haven't used enamel paints before. Uh, it, it moves very easily and it, it you know stays wet for a considerable amount of time. Uh, I coat the entire model in this this can actually be passed through an airbrush as well if you you, you like for a kind of slightly different effect. However, uh, this time I brushed it on. But the trick with streaking grimes is that you can kind of work reductively, which is nice. You can apply it and then kind of pull it back off with materials. So here I'm just using like a microfiber cloth, but you can use Q-tips, uh, sponges, or other materials to kind of pull away some of the streaking grimes. It leaves it, you know, deposited in the recessed areas or in the places that you want to kind of look the most gritty. All of these early stages are kind of like the, the base that I work from, from all my vehicles. And you can see this is the dried, a night of after drying the streaking grimes. And actually, you know, I always think this stage looks pretty solid and you, you can tell like it wasn't that much work. Uh, it has a, a kind of a nice effect, but I always want to punch up the colors and the saturation and the weathering. So this is where I, I come in with the Mephiston Red again. You can see the consistency is kind of like a thick glaze, like it's it's pretty thin, and I sort of build up the color slowly with the brush, 
I do a little bit of both. I, I do some brush work and I do some airbrush work. If you don't have an airbrush, most of these stages can be done with just a brush. It's just a little bit more time consuming. I kind of wanted to show both. Red is also a really uh, forgiving color to work with. Uh, you know, uh, GW's uh, reds are really nice, and like when they're kept thin, they transition into each other really nicely. Uh, th they're easy to kind of create some blends and, and sort of glaze on the color. Okay, so you can see, like I said, grabbing the airbrush, and I'm, I'm also using the Mephiston red again to, I'm just sort of punching up that red, kind of slowly building up the red again over some of the weathering that I had done. That's often a pattern of how I work, is that I'll build something up, then knock it back with weathering or, or washes, then bring it back back up, you know, until I find that, that middle zone that I, I really like where it's at. All right, coming in with the Evil Sun Scarlet, again with the airbrush. This is really where it starts to pump, punch up like the reds, the saturation, the warmth of the reds. I take it, you know, a little bit further than I want to with the highlights uh, because I know that I'm gonna, you know, weather it back a little bit. All right, you can see that's where we were at so far. Again, not looking bad. You can kind of stop any time in these processes. All right, grabbing the Dalarani black ink. This is always fun to pass through the airbrush. The inks are a really useful tool, something that if you're trying to up your game, I, I really recommend you kind of explore working with inks. You know, very th thin but highly pigmented uh, paints. They're acrylic, so water soluble. I'm bringing the black into some of the recessed detail areas, like the wheel wells and inside the little cockpit area and stuff like that to just kind of accentuate some of the contrast. Also uh, used a little bit on the engine in the back. Okay, the Wild Rider Red comes in, and this is really something that I use just as sort of an edge highlight. Um, I didn't use a tremendous amount of this color on this model. Uh, there weren't as many edges that I wanted to sort of pick out and really kind of punch up, but uh, there are a couple of other orc vehicles, and even on, on the orc infantry that I really like using this color as the final edging. It, um, it kind of really knocks the, the red up. I even added some little streak marks uh, with the color too, you can see there. Okay, so an interesting experiment on this model. Uh, you can see that I laid on a stencil. That stencil was cut from this uh, stencil paper that was with my wife's uh, Cricut machine that I had bought her for her birthday, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. It's uh, a really interesting device that will actually uh, take an image that you load into it from the computer and actually cut it. And so I was able to cut out a little st flame stencil here. So I actually grabbed um, first uh, just a simple white through the airbrush, thinned down quite a bit, and just kind of laid in this like kind of a ghost stencil, like a kind of a ghosty looking flame there. I wanted that sort of theme to kind of run through it, so I just, you know, popped in on the, the tail fin there, and even on that, that front scoop gets a little bit of flame. The reason why I came in with the white is that i then going to come in with this Lamenter's yellow through the airbrush and sort of glaze the yellow over that, 
and that will kind of create this nice bright yellow but it also will transition nicely into the the red that's an always interesting technique to use the airbrush for is to you know lay down a, a nice light color and then glaze another color over it and you can kind of do that in layers if you want to really like punch up some some bright colors all right so again like i said start to weather back to some of these colors uh, doing a little bit of dry brushing, careful dry brushing this time with the lead belcher. Wanted to pick out some of the uh, the bolts and some of the edges and some of the things that got a little bit of a, the overspray with uh, the reds. And then the iron breaker, I'm gonna use this in a few ways. First, I'm starting with just a sponging technique, uh, just using my um, tweezers there and a, a little piece of sponge and kind of stippling on some uh, chipped kind of effects lightly with the sponge. This is a nice sort of textural effect. And then also using the iron breaker for some, you know, hand painted uh, scratches and streaks, especially I thought on that front scoop, you know, they're going to be plowing into stuff and flying over the hood of that, that thing. So it needed a lot of, a lot of weathering and damage in the front. That's where we're at with the, the iron breaker. All right, I came in with the Agrax. Um, kind of use this in a, a rough, recessed shade in certain places. Kind of hit uh, even some of the red and, and, and yellow in other parts just to um, sort of knock it back and then accentuate some of the, uh, the recessed details. Not letting it pool anywhere, that's important. Then using the Dalarani ink again, I, w I wanted to accentuate these uh, little icons on the the dragster, but um, I didn't want to punch them out into like a yellow or a red. I, j I just felt like that would draw too much attention to them. I actually don't like them that much, and I think on my the future buggies I'm, I might file them down. Um, but uh, this one I was kind of keeping pretty standard, so j just sticking with it. So you can see I added the black to, to each of them, and, and then just gonna quickly. Uh, Use the black for some uh, like hand painted texture. It's kind of a fun thing to do is like adding some hatch lines and then actually just quickly coming in and like rubbing it off. It um, it's subtle, but it, it can give like a nice little effect. Grab the iron breaker and uh, just again like a, a, a very light dry brush to to catch the edges on some of those those details that I just added some of the black to. Okay, so I'm actually using the base from my other video on, on how to do a desert base for this one. Kind of convenient. Um, so I was starting to think about, you know, the, the dirt and the dust that's got to go on this thing. So pulling out the typhus corrosion, um, the wheels always felt too smooth on this thing for me. So I played a, uh, applied a, a thin layer of the, the typhus corrosion to, to the wheels to give them kind of like a, a texture to catch some of the, the dust paint and uh, weathering powder is going to apply to this thing. Also use the Typhus Corrosion sort of like on the underside of the, the carriage and the, the lower portions of it to give like kind of a subtle, uh, you know, subtle texture and uh, darken it down a little bit. Like the thing's been driving through the desert for years. All right, so I also just attached some of the details. You can see I attached the wire, uh, the wheels and um, the gun mount. I, uh, those were, uh, the gun was painted separately, the little squig, not something I painted on camera. All right, so for my first stage of dusting is using the Zandri dust through the airbrush. Really, it's like this bottom up 
highlight essentially you know that bringing sort of the this light dusty effect into uh like the whole underside and lower portions of the vehicle this is actually how i used to do all the the dusting uh before i ex started experimenting with the um weathering powders too i i actually just you know after the stage you could you could just stop i i actually kind of like it where it's at um, I, I took it a little bit further with the, the weathering powders. Some of it worked, some of it not so much. Um, I'm still not as experienced with them, so it's something that uh, I'm still uh, still experimenting and, and getting it to the point, dialed in to the point that like I really like it. So these were the three colors that I used, and, and the interesting part about the pigments is that you can uh, mix them and you can use them dry, you can use them wet. To use them wet, I use some of the airbrush thinner from Vallejo. So you can see here, I just grabbed the old bottle cap and you can actually sort of combine colors to bring together something that's closer to uh, the tones that you want. So I, I wanted something kind of a, a little bit more similar to the Zandri dust that I was using there. So I mixed two colors together with the thinner. And I wanted this really to, to go into the recessed like portions of the wheel. Because what happens when this, this wet mixture dries, it really creates this, as you can see there, this sort of like crusted, um, dusted effect. Unfortunately, I pulled off a little bit of the typhus corrosion there that I, I had to, to go back and fix uh, off camera. Also ended up using the pigments dry. This was really like the kind of the, the final stages. I had painted the crew separately. Um, I like doing that, kind of painting up the crew first. It kind of gives me motivation to then really have a, a fun time on the vehicles, like kind of uh, give them something to actually ride in. Um, and then I just went a little bit nuts with the, the mixture of the, the dry. What's nice is you can kind of apply it heavily and then come in, you know, and, and kind of blow off some of the, the, the dried pigments and kind of push it around a little bit, kind of scrub it into the, the portions of the model that, that you want it to, uh, want it to dust up. And so here's a couple of final shots. I mean, it, it, it came out pretty good. I think it gives you, gives you, you a good feel of like how I approach, uh, our, like heavily weathered evil suns. I think the vehicles are, you know, actually uh, a, a time that you can kind of cut loose and, and have a little bit of fun experimenting with some of the different processes. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, like, comment, share, you know, that whole YouTube thing. I appreciate the support. And uh, follow me over at Quarter Paint on Instagram. Thanks.